The research that we are doing at the University of Wolverhampton in collaboration with research groups in Lecce and Rome in Italy is based on the premise that we want to replace the current technology which uses electrons flowing through wires around electronic circuits with photons that power photonic circuits. To do that, we need to be able to control and generate quantum states inside of the photonic circuit so that the photons can preserve those quantities, but also we need to generate quantum gates that allows us to make photons behave in certain ways to produce logical operations. For quantum gates to work, we need photons to see each other, to interact with each other. But as you know, photons don't interact with each other. So we need, instead of photons, we need hybrid particles that have properties of the photons, such as their coherence and their lightweight, but also properties inherent to matter, such as the interactions. One way to have this hybrid particle is to turn to a platform where light interacts strongly with matter. And this, especially for technology, we can do with semiconductor. And here at the University of Wolverhampton, we are experts in the theory of light-matter interactions, while our colleagues in Italy are experts from the experimental point of view. Now, what is very interesting is that you form a new quasi particle called polarity that possesses both the properties of photons and those of electrons. In fact, you can have photons with the ability of interacting. These polaritons are a crossover between a photon and an exciton. So it's a cycle which you have sometimes a photon and some others you have an electron hole pair that is called an exciton. And this oscillation back and forth between the photon and the exciton is a polariton. We try to see if these particle polaritons can maintain their the quantum state um, when you reduce the number to the particles up to having just one polariton. What we do is take uh, two entangled photons. Now, while one keeps traveling through this free space, the other one is converted into a polariton in this micro cavity. It remains there for some time, and then it's converted back into a photon. So this is the first time that anybody has done such an experiment, meaning that this is the first time that uh, the polaritons are being excited using single photons. And what we could demonstrate is that even if you have interacting particles, polarions, you can still maintain the entanglement. And this can lead to a lot of interesting things. You can go from Bose-Einstein condensation to proper devices, like a transistor or a switch. All are based on interacting photons, and all in a very small microchip. This is the first step towards a generation of new technology in which we don't use uh, electronic circuits, like the ones that you have in your television set, for instance. We can replace electronic circuitry by photons traveling through waveguides. Now, this will be faster because photons go at the speed of, of light, but also they will need less energy to function because less heat will be dissipated by the, by the electronic device that you are using. For quantum computers, for instance, what you need is actually to have the possibility on the one hand, to, uh, to maintain the quantum state, and on the other hand, to, uh, to let these quantum states interact with each other. This experiment is one step ahead um, in the demonstration that first, polaritons can sustain quantum information, so you can use them to encode quantum information, and that ultimately, because you can scale this to, to very small uh, spaces, so we can use polaritons to generate a compact uh, quantum computer in the future.